Take my name out of all your pages, because guess what? Soon, you are all going to just have to pay me for having my name in your sh- I'm just going to have my people come along and you'll realize that you just get a letter and I just get paid for every fucking video that was monetized with my name in it. You'll either have to take all the videos down or you'll have to pay me. And that's what you'll have to do. Well, you know why now? Why his name isn't in the title. But today we're talking about Wes Watson. Everybody knows Wes Watson, right? You've you've heard of WW's name. W Watt. The W, bro. You've heard of his name, right? Can you guys share with our viewers what you do for a living? What do you do for a living? I'm Wes Watson. Everybody knows who I am. What's your name? Wes Watson. Who? I'll be honest, I didn't have a clue who this dude was until he was already getting exposed for other fraudulent behaviors by Ooh. another fraudulent guru. But this time, instead of coming from some kind of humble beginning, West, on the other hand, is an ex-inmate, and he wants everyone to know about it. You see, West has gained a ton of exposure from many different podcasts and certain online talk shows. All of these episodes or podcasts titled with, you know, ex-prisoner or ex-con to millionaire. And if you think about it, the general theme of his success success is the typical cliche failure to fortune, regs to riches kind of guy. And outside of the West context, I'm sure we all love to see somebody winning from a place of not winning, like being the underdog is awesome. I mean, I'm sure you've seen the guy who runs this school of hard knocks, you know, the guy that does all the street interviews with millionaires. So the most amount of money that we have done will be this year. We'll do about 250 million, about 100 million, north of 20 million annual re recurring revenue. You could pick literally any video of his and I guarantee you two things. The first is that he'll always ask these mega rich people, have you ever been broke before? And the second thing I guarantee is that every single fucking one of them says yes. Have you ever been broke before? Hell yes. And I wake up every morning and I feel broke. At any point in time, have you ever been broke before? Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I was raised by a single mother. Now she's very successful herself, but she never gave me anything. So everything I have is she made me earn it. Have you ever been broke before? I have, yes. <laughs> I definitely have. When I used to be a nanny, COVID hit, and so all my jobs are like, oh, we don't really need you anymore. But at the time, like, I had bills to pay. I had all of these expenses, and I was down, like, my last $20 bill. But, you know, you just have to figure it out. You yeah. have to go from there. Yeah. And it just tells you we love hearing the underdog story. We love hearing about how people can make it from rags to riches, what they did step by step, because in some part, it's highly relatable. All of us have been in rags before, or at least something similar to it, unless we we're extremely fortunate and lucky. No one really talks about the people who were born into millionaire families is while they have a privilege not many people will ever get to experience. Therefore, they just aren't relatable. I mean, in traditional countries, they'll be at the top of the food chain, but no one really cares or remembers their name for anything. We like hearing about the struggles of sleeping on your floor, or sleeping in your car, sleeping in your office, trying to sleep in your newly leased building that you're running your business out of, but you don't have a home yet because you couldn't afford both. And we love these things not because it's just more relatable, but it also gives us this sense of disparity. We've all been in situations where we've been so desperate to succeed and we've had to do some pretty extreme things. Therefore, it's an amazing thing when you can see the other side of that. And it certainly gives us hope when we can see someone who has made it to the other side. Now, in West's case, it's obviously a little bit more on the extreme end. Going from being a prisoner to who he is now, it's not the first time we've actually seen success stories like this. I mean, <laughs> Ali Muscle was one of the biggest names in fitness industry at one point in time and he served over a decade for armed robbery fucking armed robbery dude turns out the same youtube channel fresh out who features ex-con stories and they did a story on cali muscle back in 2014 also featured our buddy west watson back a couple years ago and as you can see from the clip sure he's a person who ended up in prison due to his extremely poor decision making but at the time he was arguably a really well-spoken person uh, no but but no but 100% I would have said um, you get what you give and it, it took me about seven years to at least seven plus years to make up for that karma that I put out in the universe that bullshit I put out yeah, all yeah. the people I hurt and all the shit I did yeah. that shit just kept coming back to me and then I, then I realized that one, I, one day I felt it <clears throat> when all that shit was clear and, and my, my, my thinking was a lot more productive and I just had no more baggage. And, and from then on, I, I made a lot of good changes. But just to keep you up to date on how the story has progressed, it's not at all who he is now. Squat and cough, motherfucker, what you got? You're shoveling shit in your fucking face. You're fucking jacking off incessantly. You're fucking smoking weed. You're drinking. You're doing everything you shouldn't do. Fuck is the matter with you? What are you doing? But Wes, I've been dieting for like 20 months. 
the fuck up. You've been doing it a year? Shut the fuck up. I'll wait till everything's perfect and then I'll start posting. Or motherfucker, fuck you, shut up. Yeah, the W man ain't really kicking it no more. He's literally the love child of two Andrew Tates that grew up watching only Andrew Tate instead of Coco Melon. Scratch that. <laughs> he never grew up. The W man is still definitely a child, which you'll see shortly. Anyways, it seems like his whole business operates on degrading other people for money. So this thing has calories, you fucking idiot. There, there's calories and protein. <laughs> the fuck are you talking about? Okay. Is there, you, are you brain dead? You guys, listen, there's... You need to fucking be smarter with your goddamn questions. You're wasting. Wes, I know you. I, I know. I heard you say that before to to do some research, and I was doing research when I was thirteen. I literally understood the question you're asking at thirteen, bro. <laughs> There's no way that you're that dumb. But we'll talk more about this a bit later. Because recently there's been this major event that kicked off the whole controversy with this individual. And that's before talking about the scams and many other things. You might be familiar with the Fresh and Fit podcast. It's run by a dude, Myron. And it's essentially just a bunch of fucking man children who make a podcast out of shitting on OnlyFans women. It's pretty garbage content, but somehow they claim to be the number one self-improvement podcast on the planet. Well, recently they ran a live event and a yacht party, so somewhere in Miami, and this live event was basically just an in-person podcast consisting of a bunch of totally irrelevant online entrepreneur gurus, where they talked and asked each other all sorts of different things about their journey and experiences and all sorts of whatnot shit. And it was during this show that West Watson made a major scene, basically throwing an entire tantrum because he didn't agree with what one guy had to say. How do you define success? My definition of success is across the board. If if you're not ripped, if you're not rich, if you ain't rare, if you don't stand out, if you ain't across the board successful, it doesn't mean fucking shit to me. If you got straight tits and you're in your Rolls Royce, you look like a fucking clown to me. I'm just laughing at your dumb fucking ass. My definition of success is having a family, having children, and being part of the apparatus of the world. And true wealth is a rejection of materialism. As Christ said himself, what good does it benefit a man to gain the entire world at the cost of his soul? You have money. The person. Does, does he have money? No. I'm just asking, do you have money? I just thought, no, I'm broke. I'm a nobody. No, but really you are? Yeah. Is he really broke? Yeah. Does anyone, can anyone answer for the guy? <laughs> why do they think I'm kidding? I have a family. I take care of an entire family. Why are you proud of who the fuck bro, you are? Why, why, why well, look you at, are you proud? Kids? If you look in the mirror, would you guys say this motherfucker's proud of who the fuck he is? That's a bag of trash, dude. Jesus Christ, because look I've been at to you, prison? bro. You got 10-inch arms and tits. <laughs> Men don't have tits. No, guys. they go to prison where they get fucking, fuck yeah, where they, they get do. raped up the ass. You've but Jesus yeah. Christ, men don't have tits. We can agree on that. Physically, men he, usually have he hair. Has, we can agree on that, too. He has Physically. crossed over gender barriers. I think it's safe to say at this point, you might have a good idea of who West Watson truly is. But let's just unpack a little bit more from here. First of all, let's just talk about the elephant in the room. West literally spent the entire open topic shouting like this because, well, he thinks his opinion is so much more superior than everybody else's. Let's just remind ourselves, being loud doesn't make you right in every situation. In fact, most of the time, it just makes you look like an unsubtle idiot. And in fact, we can see that the majority of the viewers are absolutely fucking sick of this guy. But that clip specifically was probably the most viral instance of him just blowing up at some dudes, likely just because he wanted to steal some exposure from Fresh and Fit. Now let's break down these two perspectives here so I can give you my perspective on the whole thing. You've got West, who is claiming and suggesting that the only way you can call yourself successful is by being successful on all fronts. Fundamentally, that's a terrible way of thinking of things. There's that saying that says the way you do one thing is the way that you do everything. And so if you want to put your best effort in every aspect of life, you want to have a successful career, look after your health, look after your family, and so on. But in West's eyes, he means that you have to be rich, and have a mansion, and have all the cars, and all the women you want, and be jacked as fuck, and probably be bald too. I mean, his t-shirt literally says, ripped, rich, and rare. That all covers it, right? On the other hand, you've got this dude, I have no idea who he is, I don't even know why he's on there if he's calling himself broke. I thought the whole point of this thing was just to be a bunch of rich, red-pilled assholes 
skills, but apparently it's a bit different from what I expected. Because this guy's definition of success is literally what I think most of us would define as success, which is having a family, children, and I think that's a beautiful and wonderful thing that I aspire for myself. And most of these guys are certainly entitled to their own opinions, but clearly Wes missed the point, that they're all supposed to be sharing their personal opinions and views on the world. Instead, he felt the need to interrupt everybody, make a scene, and act as a dictator to tell that individual he's wrong for having an opinion about his own personal views on his life. And then he goes on to some full-blown tangent like Andy Elliott talking about taking your shirt off and tell me if you're proud of yourself. It's just so inappropriate. Now, obviously, I come from a background of bodybuilding, but I'm not going to sit here and tell every man that your goal should be to be the fucking ripped and shredded and jacked. I just don't think it's practical. I think this other guy could probably become a little bit more fit. Sure. But do I think he needs to get 20 inches of bicep to call himself a man? Absolutely not. I think he should just be a healthy person. And uh, arguably being healthy doesn't mean taking a fuck ton of steroids, Wes. So Wes continues to scream his head off like a little baby does at a feeding time. And this dude is cool as a cucumber, knowing that in his own eyes, he's already successful. He's confident in himself. There's no empty bone in his body. All whilst Wes definitely doesn't seem like he could possibly be successful in every way, quote unquote, given that he has the emotional maturity of an unborn fetus. But I guess nobody cares about that because Wes has developed a way to <laughs> escape the fucking matrix like everybody else has. He's so red pill maxing, bro. And he's even found a way to escape the matrix beyond the matrix, beyond that matrix, claiming that he makes $3 million a month, brother. And this is after being released from prison. But this is where the lies and the scams start to really take hold. Because if you've seen Wes on the YouTube sphere at all, chances are you've noticed a lot of allegations claiming the things he says about prison are all wrong. And for one who's always talking about California gangs and California level fours and all this stuff, right? Here's a kicker. He's only been to one prison in California, and that was California Department of Corrections Rehabilitation Reception Center in Donovan. He was only in Donovan Reception. These are 100% confirmed facts. This isn't to say that he didn't go to jail. He definitely did. But considering that his entire claim to fame and Channel's foundation is talking about his prison time, and that's effectively a large part of how he built his business, a lot of the claims seem to be extremely exaggerated or completely just fabricated, allegedly. Now, it looks like the majority of these videos are referencing this video here. It's by a channel literally called A Convict's Perspective, and as you might have guessed, the videos are made talking in the perspective of a convict. Who would have thought? Now in this video, the creator seemed to have acquired by unknown means West's CDCR History of Housing. And those of you who don't know, CDCR stands for the California Department of Corrections and Rehabilitation. And they're basically the governing body who regulates how prisons in California operate and obviously house their documentations and such. And that happens to be how we can confirm that the entire backstory is essentially fabricated. This photo is a bit blurry, but if you can see here, Watson Wesley in the top corner, that's him. And then slightly below that, you will see bed assignments, which is essentially the record of where he is staying during his time locked up. And if we keep going now, you'll see a second angle just so we can see the time frames of different locations. The problem is if you look over to the left, the first few records cover a span of about three months from September to December in 2010. That is the only time that he was going through the system in California. And this wasn't even a full-blown prison. This was a reception housing where they just decide to keep you before actually placing you in some form of housing or in confinement. I don't know what the fuck you want to call it. And the rest of the time you can see that Wes basically spent his time in Arizona and Oklahoma. And yet Wes's entire prison story is based around being in all these high-level prisons in California. So much so that he's got two whole series about it. If you go to my Instagram, I posted on, on in black and white on Instagram since 2014 in the pen. Right. Like once we got smartphones and I was at Delano, I posted every day. And there's many other ex-convicts who literally promise you their whole life that he is full of shit based on the stories that he is telling. Dudes like Wes Watson, he ain't never been a max for you. Like dudes like that are fake as shit, bro. Like he ain't he, he never he got whooped on a minimum security yard before he got out. And you can't go to the shoe program and go to a minimum security yard. Like, I was in the shoe program. But you think he's all fake? He got jumped on a minimum security yard before he got out for being a drug addict. I don't care if he was doing drugs in prison, so was I. There's nothing wrong with that. Mm -hmm. Just say it. You know what I'm saying? You're a multimillionaire, bro. Like, just be real. I was a drug addict in prison. I didn't run. I wasn't in the shoe program. Real tough guys don't talk like he does all day long on Instagram. So I literally sent him a DM and you could tell I was self-conscious about it because I sent him a DM. I was like, yo, how'd you go to a minimum security yard if you if you were in the shoe program? He Instagram FaceTime called me. 
Really? <laughs> That's crazy. Bro, Bill Streetchin' up. I'm like five years out of prison, right? Like 400 followers. And he's like, you one of those internet tough guys? I was like, no. I literally told him. I was like, bro, no, I'm the dude you claim to be. And I was like, but I'm the truth. And he's like, what the fuck are you? He's like, I made $50,000 today. And I was like, I don't give a shit how much yeah. money you made. I was like, bro, I asked you a question. How did you go to the shoe program and go to minimum security? That's the only question I want to know. And he's like, oh, so you are one of those internet tough guys. And I'm like, no, I just asked you a question, bro. I'm not even trying to get tough yeah. with you, bro. He ends up telling me how much money he made and that he has no time to discuss this. So all he's done is take some heresy from other inmates and thrown his tough guy personality on top of it, then gone to regurgitate the stories that aren't even his, and yet uh, people believe him. Just believe what this man says. He's some sort of white guy covered in tattoos who's bald and jacked, so obviously, you know, he's an ex-convict. My an ex-convict? Holy shit. Maybe that's, I don't know, like $3 million a month. Son of a bitch. You gotta go to fucking prison or something. What the hell? Don't clip that. But seriously, there seems to be something in common between all of these gurus and coaches that has only begun to occur very frequently as of late. See, when you think about guys like Iman Godzi, the kid who went from poverty to multimillionaire, except his stepfather was already extremely rich, or Jay Shetty, who totally fabricated this history as a monk to become a world-renowned quote-unquote life coach, or now West Watson, who preaches like prison shaped his entire life and it was because he was behind bars, they all have one thing in common. An extremely elaborate, totally fabricated backstory that they all stick to as if it's all they know. And the reason they do this is because as much as most people think they've pulled the wool from their eyes and realize there's no such thing as get rich quick, there most certainly is. It just requires you to be extremely immoral, to scam a bunch of people, to lie and be lucky enough to blow up before somebody exposes you so you can rag pull your fucking millions off your audience. Obviously, in my opinion, opinion, the risk isn't worth it, as we see a lot of these people come and go, and most of them fail and enter lawsuits and lose most of the money they earned, or stole. Also not advising you to do anything morally wrong either, but it's a sad truth nonetheless. You see it in the fitness industry and bodybuilding a lot, where a coach will sell a program for really cheap and then, well, never reply to the client that they sold the program to. They just sell it and then the ghost. So in the W man's case, unfortunately, it happens to be a case that he got so lucky that he almost got too big to fail at this point. I mean, like the guy said, which might genuinely be true, he's making multiple seven figures at a monthly basis at this point. Nothing about that is normal, especially not for a guy that's been in business for less than half a decade. Now, we all know West isn't a moral character, but could you honestly convince anyone that he built his career using good and intentful work? Absolutely not. And as far as I've gone in this video, I've been hammering this dude for being a liar or a scammer, a fraud, and whatever else you want to call it. But you might be wondering, aside from being a liar and a major dick, what else has he done so bad? Well, I'm glad you asked. Let's just revisit a few points about West's business model. The key factor is that West thinks that he, because he has gone to prison, it makes you a better man. Men don't have tits! No, yeah. they go to prison where they get fucking... Fuck yeah, they, they get do. raped up the ass. You've never been to prison. Look, <laughs> that's what happens. Shit, you don't know. They go to prison well, where they get raped. Now this. you get your ass on, beat on, in front of everybody. You think that's better? Guys, you guys. think that that's better? Okay. And so he is a good man, in fact, and that's how he's going to teach you how to be a man. But apparently, for West to teach you how to be a man, he has to treat you like a total bitch. And I'm not kidding. You might be thinking that his asshole attitude would halt his business, but fuck no. It's literally the foundation for it. All of these simps are paying for him just to yell at them. What's up, Wes? Just wanted to uh, hop on here real quick and thank you for everything. I know you don't got a lot of time, but if you're not asking a does. question, I'm going to fucking kill you. I told you I was on motherfucking time. Are you going to ask a question or are you just saying thank you? Because you could fucking text me that motherfucker. I don't take it kindly. I don't give a fuck. Do you have a question? The question is, as I get more one-on-ones, at what point do I restructure the offering? Wait till you to... get there. Jesus Christ, bro. Like, why Why are we talking about hypotheticals? You're not even close to that. Yeah, I was, I'm was. i approaching a number that I feel like I... You're not. Wanna... You don't even have any business. Shut up. You don't have enough business to be worried about over fucking working. How many fucking clients you got? How many? I got four one on ones right now. Oh my God. Should I just hang up, you guys? Oh no. If he has six, he may have to opt out. Jesus Christ. Robert, shut the fuck up. Learn how to work harder. Like, at least have one one on one a day of the week. Like, seven. Maybe if you had seven. I have hundreds, bro. Jesus Christ, dude. This guy has four one on ones and he talked about, I might have to restructure it. You guys, all, everyone can physically slap Robert when they see him in person. Though I don't 
think, especially based on the reaction, that the men who are paying him an ungodly amount of money to do these things expected him to be this way behind the paywall. Now, just look at this Instagram post here, which is a caption uh, from a, a victim of one of West's. His online fitness coaching costs aren't all that bad. They're pretty reasonable middle ground before you consider what you're getting. Wes alleges that he'll build you a custom training program and a personalized diet program, and he also allegedly runs an hour-long group Q&A once per week. Problem is, I don't see how West has time to build custom programs for every single guy that wants his coaching if he's so busy whining on the internet with his supercars. That aside, we've also got confirmation that the whole program is built on Trainrise, which isn't a bad app, but I just hope that everybody knows and coaches might want to defend themselves in the comments section down below, but it is a coaching app designed for coaches to coach clients that basically has everything pre-built for you. So if you're paying for a coach and they're using that app, well, they're just using the app's functions to coach you, like the pre-made workouts, the pre-made diets, and just about everything else is computer generated so they can just collect your paycheck and then put shit on automated. I highly doubt that Wes has actually even built a program himself. I mean, it's highly unlikely that he is. Given the post here with another victim's testimonial, they claim that they got zero personalized help from Wes and he rarely even responded to any messages. And this other post where a client literally states that Wes on Trainerize wasn't even aware of the conversation had with Wes over on Instagram. But this isn't even as bad as it gets because you might have noticed in the first post, the display was a confirmed payment of a whopping three rand. Now this person here says that they became quite disappointed with his fitness assistance and so they decided to want to get his help as a business coach instead, suggesting that the appeal was in fact that Wes promises to build out an entire marketing funnel and manager advertisements as well, which is a huge undertaking. Now, I don't know what kind of dumbass is going to ignore the red flags that already existed and continue to blow another few thousand dollars on this individual, but that just goes to show the audience that Wes has. They're literally no different than the guy donating thousands of dollars to the girl on a Twitch stream dressed in an anime outfit. What's funny even still is that the guy goes on to say that as soon as he showed interest, Wes called him without even trying to set an appointment or any formalities, and then when the guy already was preoccupied, Wes just turned around and said, fuck you, I ain't even fucking with you. <laughs> now, just from a business perspective, this is collectively a fucking horrible idea because Wes very clearly doesn't know what he's doing. Customer service is a component of the longevity of almost any business. And I don't know how he's promising to set up other people's businesses for them because he doesn't know how to set appointments for himself. He doesn't even know how to build relationships with customers or potential clients. It literally looks like he doesn't have any marketability besides just screaming on the internet on an Instagram reel every once in a while. And he doesn't know sales because it seems like every time he's on a sales call or someone mentions this time that they spoke to him, he just basically tries to force someone into buying something by quite literally just being an asshat. And so blindly, the guy from the post continued to pay for the program only to be told, just post stuff on Instagram, bro. And essentially was denied access to other components of the program because he needed to build more motion first, whatever that means. Now, it's not entirely wrong to drip feed people People content because if you just dump it all at once, they're going to be completely overwhelmed and miss the point of whatever you're trying to teach them. But it seems more like to me that Wes isn't actually providing a decent helping hand with building someone's brand or creating that motion. He got that motion, twing. This isn't the only time Wes has run away with someone's money. In fact, this happens dozens of times. Here we got a guy who paid Wes a whopping 10 grand for a podcast feature only for Wes to continuously reschedule and then refuse to refund the guy who an ass. And and here's another account of him basically doing the same thing, taking a payment, perpetually rescheduling, and then asking for more money later, never delivering on what he had originally promised, and then ultimately just ghosting the guy after screaming his head off. So it seems that this is the way that West makes the majority of his money, simply by making promises that he never delivers on and then taking the money anyways, because realistically he can't cater to a functional business. And instead he goes on Instagram and yells at people for simply not being enough of a man. Now let's just imagine here, let's just extract that uh, he's charging 3k a month for business coaching, which is what he says he is, which isn't necessarily a huge amount when it comes to business coaching. I've actually paid more myself. But let's just imagine, right? Wes is taking 60 minute Zoom calls, 24 hours, seven days a week. No sleep, no rest, nothing. Which is obviously impossible. Let's just entertain the thought here. That's almost $72,000 a day just by calling these other people, which completely eliminates any possibility of being able to pursue other income sources. So the other thing is that Wes Wes obviously needs sleep, he needs to eat, and of course he needs to take his steroids and train, so the realistic amount he'd be making is far less than that. We also have to consider the fact that 
during his waking hours, he's certainly not spending every single minute with clients as well. So how can we, mathematically speaking, be expecting Wes to be making multi-millions of dollars a month if he can only manage in an unrealistic situation 72k of uh, a day? Well, he might have a team, but it doesn't seem like from the testimonials that I've read and people who've reached out to me that that isn't the case, or at least if the team is there, it's all, well, to be honest, foreigners that he has do virtual assistant work as opposed to doing any kind of real work. Uh, so I think the answer is very simply, he isn't making multiple millions of dollars per month. Wes claims that all his cars and properties are totally paid off and owned by him, yet the same property you see him posting in all the time is actually just a rental that went up for sale a little over six months ago and definitely is not under his name. And so if he lied about his house being self-owned and paid off, chances are he also lied about a lot of his other materials being his belongings as well. That million dollars in his Chase bank account, probably legit. The claim he makes $3 million a month though, well, it was initially $7 million, but we're down to three in different videos. Not highly unlikely. And personally, I find this very suspicious because we've got Spencer Cornelius over here, the guy who usually exposes these kind of people for claiming his friend has seen West's Stripe account and can confirm it doing over $2 million a month. But if you've ever dealt with Stripe yourself, you'd know that they shut down millions of legit businesses on their platform daily and even have become more strict recently. So the chances of West sustainably operating on a platform slim to none. I mean, I've had thousands upon thousands of dollars frozen by Stripe for no reason. And I can imagine Wes is the kind of guy to wait around for such fuckery. Now, I'm not saying he's just totally fraudulent as if he's just some bum behind the scenes. Don't get me wrong. It still costs a lot of fucking money to rent all the stuff he shows off. I mean, the property he showed earlier was about $23 million when it was put up for sale. But to rent that property on a monthly basis, it would cost you somewhere near one hundred to even $200,000. And then you consider all the cars he has or claims to have a Rolls Royce, a Ferrari, Lamborghinis, everything you can think of. That's still hundreds of thousands of dollars in rental costs per month, and he could most likely buy those up front. Apparently, not the way you play these days. The whole formula to success at the moment just seems to be creating an extravagant lifestyle that is completely not extravagant. You just pay ass loads of money to fabricate a lifestyle because, well, it sells people on the idea that you have being one that's going to make you successful. And it truly doesn't matter if 99% of the people see through your bullshit, if you're getting a million people to catch your content, it only takes a couple hundred a month to be gullible enough to pay you several thousand dollars just to make your money back tenfold. And so sadly, we're reaching the end of the video and you might feel a little bit of defeat, probably even a bit pissed off. There's countless videos at this point of showing and exposing Wes Watson as a complete scam artist and a horrible person. And yet it still seems that he's roaming free, profiting off of other people's misfortune. Except that's not all true. See, West's main Instagram account was banned from Instagram a couple of months ago. That's an account where he had upwards of a million followers and likely made the majority of his income. People with Reddit posts suggest that he's back up and as far as I can search, I haven't found shreds of evidence that he's back on the platform. He also hasn't, oddly enough, been recently shown on any podcasts or events whatsoever, likely because of what happened on the Fresh and Fit podcast around five months ago. I think it is overall a sad story. I hope West begins to fail and see his hubris and ultimately return back to his roots, which were kind of a really helpful situation. I mean, he wanted to help people with their fitness. That was his journey as it started. He got a boatload of great client transformations and genuinely could have been a decent figure in the space of fitness. The unfortunate part of all this is he became too greedy and decided to establish himself as a fraud rather than just staying humble and improving people's lives. And evidently, quick rich schemes do exist. The side of the story that they don't tell you is that getting rich implies that you are going to destroy your reputation, destroy other people's happiness and legitimacy in this world, and simply face tons of legal battles. That reminds me, actually, I think he was friends with Diddy, so... Down here at, at Pura Vita by my pad, run into the man right here. Uh, what's up? Miami's like that. Yeah. It's a movie. Yeah. I guess I've said enough. At the end of the day, we're talking about a guy who is absolutely berating a person trying to work a manual labor job that he's likely paying for because he's too loud in the back of his video. And keep in mind, he's in a multi-million dollar home that has multiple rooms. He could stop talking, pause the video, or just completely redo the video in another room and be completely fine. And instead, what he decides to do is have a complete fragile roid rage moment where he looks like the most emasculine, 
inappropriate just fuckwit of all time. I mean, he, he literally is yelling at the guy, guy doing lawn work and he's not even getting his attention. We still need to hear this fucking noise when people have to just walk around your house blowing leaves because they don't have any better solution. It's fucking psychotic. Who the fuck likes this noise around their house twice a week to pay for it? Fuck! Shut! Watch. Here you go. Here you go. Well, there the fuck you go. Two minutes of the video wasted. Because these motherfuckers just don't get that it's so fucking annoying. So if you are someone who's interested in investing in some form of guru to give you financial advice, help you start your business, or really expand your horizons, I would suggest to you one thing as someone who's paid thousands and thousands, upwards of $50,000 for a single course of money to do this, the success isn't within those courses, not even close. They could sell you any dream that you want, you could get on a sales call and they could be as pushy as they want or make things sound as enticing as possible, or just show you a lifestyle that seems really attractive on social media. But the reality of all of this really is, is that what makes the best business is one that's really fucking good at doing what you promised for people and also being consistent as fuck. If we want to just take this channel as an example, I've posted a video every single day for almost two months now. It's grown exponentially, but that's taken a lot of money, thousands of dollars, tons of hours of work. It's not what any business person has taught me to do, but it's worked to improve my business. And I think what really is important to say is if you want to be successful in business, you have to give, 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 and can keep just giving until you ask for something in return. And the problem is, is that you can hire as many coaches as you want in the world, and they're probably all just going to tell you the same thing, to work harder. There is no get rich quick scheme. Unless you want to be fuckwit here and the W man scamming people left and right. If you like this video, subscribe down below.